Hey everybody, welcome in today's video. I'm Jennifer and in today's video I'm going to try the pigment deco brush markers from Karin. These guys. And I'm going to draw a Elden Ring fan art with them today. So let's get to it. This is what the entire set with 48 markers looks like. There are 7 boxes in total within each of them are 12 markers. Each box has its own color theme. You can get this set as a whole or buy the boxes separately. There are even some places where you can buy the markers in open stock. There's a Dutch website that I found that sells them open stock for 3 euros and 75 cents per marker. I will put the link in the description below. A quick disclaimer, I bought this set myself, so I am not sponsored or asked to do this video by Karen. So as always, you're getting my honest opinion on the product. Inside each box you will find 12 gorgeous colors, a nice swatch card printed on the inside of the lid. I already swatched them before I started filming. And a sticker sheet which you can use if you want to customize your sets, which I think is neat. I also like how nicely the boxes fit into the casing. It looks tidy and beautiful at the same time. Now let's take a look at the pen itself. Before you use it, you have to give it a good shake to mix the pigments with the binder properly. These are acrylic markers, but what makes these unique is that these have a flexible brush nib. Yes, you heard that right! So unlike the Posca or Molotone markers, these should be a lot easier to create finer details with. The barrel is see-through, so you can easily see if your ink is mixed well and when you're running out of ink. Also, each color is listed on their pen caps. Each color is nice opaque to semi-opaque. I just did not like the white marker as it stayed rather translucent no matter how much I shaked the pen. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to do a Elden Ring fan art because oh boy, there hasn't been another game I've been playing ever since it was released, whenever I got some time to spare. This game is bloody everything <laughs> I mean I got my ass kicked many times I tried to kill an unkillable Nazgul mount that didn't want to go back to Mordor so and then I got my ass kicked again and again and again but oh man this game is amazing and then there was this guy he was an a-hole, <laughs> but he reminded me so much of Sif, I had to go and draw him at some point. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, here is the sketchbook in which I made the initial small sketch with the idea I had in mind and picked the colors I wanted to use. And then in here I made the drawing, already inked it, just had to color it. But we'll get to that in a second. And here I swatched out all of the pens that came into the set. So it always makes easier for me to pick out my colors, which I want to use in a drawing. Swatching is the way to go when you're trying new art supplies. Here I am roughly sketching out the red woof of Radagon with a mechanical HB pencil. For this drawing it was super helpful to have a thumbnail sketch in which I could quickly experiment where to place the flying magical swords, which he likes to conjure a lot during the fight, to see what works and what doesn't, and just to find a nice overall composition for the piece. When you sketch something with a lot of detail, it is easiest to start with simple shapes. Make sure you know where you want to place the face in the picture and where you want the body to end. Then put in the facial features like line up the eyes and the nose, make sure everything is where it should be. And lastly add your details such as the long flowy fur strands, facial wrinkles, etc. Also, don't be afraid to use references. For this piece, I used a couple of photos from Golden Jackals that I shot in a zoo some time ago. I happened to have a couple of snarly ones that I could use to reference from. 
So I could incorporate it into this illustration. From studying what's in front of us, we learn the most after all. The paper I'm using, by the way, here is Hot Pressed Watercolor Sketchbook from Fabriano. I guess there are better alternatives for acrylics, but I wanted to finish this sketchbook, or rather illustration book, and the paper accepted the ink quite well in the end. Here I am very roughly sketching in the Spectre Swords with a blue pencil lead. I simply just need them marked down so I know where not to color, so I can keep the cores white as the white marker was not very opaque at all. A bit of planning ahead can save you from a lot of grief later on. I forgot to film the part where I ink the line art, but what is most important when you do your line art before the coloring is that you use a pen or ink that is permanent, which means that it won't lead into other media when you start coloring. In this case, I used a Micron pen from Sakura. I started out with a violet color to color the background first. The ink flow was great and the tip was very juicy. I loved how easy it was to draw in all these tiny crevices around the detailed furry parts. It felt a lot more precise with the brush tip than it would have been with the stiff felt nibs that other acrylic marker brands use, which are often way too chunky to do this kind of detailed work with, especially on a smaller drawing like this. With those markers, I had to quickly come in with a brush to pull the paint into those crevices before it would dry, which was a real pain in the bum. So having an acrylic marker with a brush nib is bloody fantastic. After the entire background was filled in, I came back in with a darker violet color and sketched out where I wanted the darker areas at and colored those in. I love how easily I could color over another color. With some other markers, the nibs would sometimes want to skip or tear the paper, but with these it went effortlessly. I forgot to mention it earlier, but when you put these pens away for a while, it is important to store them horizontally with the tip tilted down a little. Ideally, you will store them in the set boxes the pen came in, but if you bought them open stock, always store them horizontally to make sure the nib doesn't dry out. I wanted to soften the edges between the purples, so I went in with some wet dark purple around the edges and quickly blend that darker color over the dry lighter purple with a slightly damp brush. This worked wonderfully, but I had to work fast as the ink would dry out on paper very fast. Then I went over the lighter areas with a pastel violet color to give the edges around the wolf some more pop. Later, when the wolf is colored, it will make him jump out of the picture even better. I again use a damp brush to soften the light and purple edges to get a cloudy effect. Now that the background is done, I start to block in the wolf. I start out blocking in its eyelids, lips and nose with a dark grey color. A yellow for its eye and some fleshy tones for its tongue and gums. I'm going to color the wolf in a cell shaded style, so I won't be blurring any edges on the wolf. I love coloring in the animated style, and combined with the soft background, it will help the wolf to stand out super well. Here you can see how opaque the lighter grays are, as they layer well on top of the super dark gray, and allow for me to create nice highlights on its wet nose and lips. Now that those bits are done, I come in with a flaming red color to block in the rest of the wolf. Now, this was a mistake, as I kind of forgot yellows are almost never a super opaque color, no matter what medium you use, but we will get to that later. <laughs> I've had some questions as to why I do ink my line art first before the coloring, especially with opaque mediums, like acrylics and gouache. I agree, it might give you more work, as lines tend to get lost under the paint and you have to redraw them, so it is probably better to save the inking for last, but I just like being able to see my lines and know what I'm coloring and where I'm coloring. Graphite usually blends into the paint, making it muddy, so I prefer to ink beforehand. It is just the way that feels most comfortable to me, even though it probably isn't the most efficient way to draw. <laughs> 
But so far these pens have really impressed me. The colors are super bright and color quite evenly. I just love, love the brush nib. It doesn't fray, so it keeps its nice fine point. They are awesome to quickly fill in large spaces and coloring fine details with these is a dream come true. I mean, I wouldn't have even attempted to do this illustration with my Poscas or the Molotovs. All those hair strands would have been a nightmare to color with those chunky stiff nibs. Also, throughout this illustration I had no problems such as skipping or pens feeling dry, no clogged up nibs, they just kept performing wonderfully. I can see this work together wonderfully with acrylic gouache as well. I completed this drawing mid-April and have not used them after. I went back to check the ink on them yesterday and they were still juicy luckily. So I guess, just like the Poscas, these will have a long shelf life. Thankfully. And here we arrive at the problem of the mistake I made that I mentioned earlier. I wanted to use a gold yellow on top of the red to create an area that is hit by light on the wall, thinking, oh, these are acrylic opaque markers, I can start with red and go over it with a gold yellow later. Well, that did not work as well as I wanted it to work. The yellow was semi-transparent, it showed up but not light enough, so I grabbed a tube of deep yellow acryla acryl gouache by Holbein to see if I could get the brighter color that I was after. I used a stay wet palette so the paint would not dry up too fast. This idea luckily worked so I used the paint and a not too wet brush to make sure the paint wouldn't become too transparent to paint in the areas that were going to be hit by light. Luckily the paint was opaque enough but next time I would either start out with the yellow color to block in with or I would keep the light areas white to color in later. I found the color of the paint too bright so I colored over it with the yellow gold marker which I intended to use from the start and finally got the color I was looking for. So this piece reminded me again that yellow just doesn't cover well on a dark color, not even for acrylic markers. <laughs> As for light fastness, their website claims the ink is permanent once dry and light fast. But sadly I can't really find any info such as light fastness ratings for each color or at least pigment information. So that claim is something we just have to believe as there is nothing to refer to if they are light fast indeed. Which is a shame. I checked the pens and there is nothing, no pigment information nor ratings on them. So I will strictly use these for illustration purposes and not for sales pieces or framed work. These pens can also be used on various surfaces such as wood, glass, plastic, stone and canvas. And due to their liquid ink technology, you can use up 100% of your ink, so you don't waste any ink, so that is super nice. I don't believe the pens are refillable though. I am almost done with the wolf, all that is left to do now is coloring in the shadows with a darker red. I quickly map out the space I want to fill in with the darker color. For illustrations like these, where I don't use a reference to color from, I like to make a quick mock-up of in Photoshop. I scan my line art in and quickly color it in on the computer. This way I can play around with color and my shadows and highlights to see what works and what doesn't. And then when I got something that I like, I store it on a USB stick and use it on my laptop in my studio so I can reference from it when I start painting. This way I don't have to break my brain over where to place every shadow or highlight when I paint and risk a failed product. Instead I just can focus on coloring and enjoy myself. So again planning ahead your illustration before you start painting can save you so much time and frustration.
So now that the wolf is done, I am moving on to the magic swords. I spared the cores of them that are staying white. I just put on a layer of white acrylic gouache over them to get rid of the paper's texture and any sketch lines that were still visible underneath. Then I color the edges with a light blue color to build up the glow effect. Then I add a darker vibrant blue over the outer edge to further enhance the glow effect. And with the same blue I draw in a flaming pattern around the core of each sword to give the idea they give off some kind of magical aura. Then I use a very light blue acrylic gouache paint color which I watered down a lot so it would become very transparent and filled in the flaming auras of each sword. I really wanted for the lines and the colors underneath the auras to shine through to add to the mystical feel of these magically conjured swords. I repeat that step for every sword. Afterwards I added some magical particles with the same blue white colors to add to the magic and the depth of the piece. And added some last minute light blue highlights to the red fur of the wolf. And as icing to the cake I used Schmincke Aero Pearl ink to add a strong blue shimmer to the flaming auras for each sword. That effect ended up so cool in the end. So we are nearing the end of the video and I can honestly say that I really really love these markers. I have like zero regrets of buying them and will surely reach for them whenever I'm going to do another acrylic marker piece again. As they are absolutely amazing, super enjoyable to use, a nice consistent large range of colors, a great quality brush nib that doesn't wear down after one painting and doesn't clog and simply gets the job done. And the ink is just as wonderful. The only con I think I can think of is the weak opaqueness of the white, but otherwise I give these markers a 10 out of 10 and would recommend them to anyone who loves to color or work with acrylic markers. I hope you enjoyed today's video and if not at least enjoyed watching me get my butt whooped in Elden Ring. <laughs> And I hope this review was helpful if you were on the fence for these markers. They are quite pricey, but in my opinion worth every buck. Leave me a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on future content. As always, hit the bell icon to get notified whenever I drop new content and feel free to ask me anything in the comment section or just to say hi. Thank you again for watching and hopefully see you in the next one. Take care and have a good one.